Hi, my name is Dr. Davis Romney. I'm a radiation oncologist here at Ironwood Cancer Center. And I want to talk to you a little bit today about thyroid cancer. It is anticipated in the United States this year that over 56,000 people will be diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Of thyroid cancers, about 90 to 95 percent of them are papillary carcinomas. Um, that's the kind that we see most commonly. Uh, it's the most treatable form of uh, thyroid cancer uh, and it's one that I primarily deal with as a radiation oncologist because papillary thyroid cancers can be treated with uh, radioactive iodine. Thyroid cells use iodine to make thyroid hormone. That's their main function. So we can use this to our advantage by giving a radioactive form of iodine. Then those cells will take up that radioactive iodine and then the radiation will, will kill those cells. So it's very advantageous. It's kind of like a, like a smart bomb in a way. So patients who have papillary thyroid carcinoma typically have surgery to remove their thyroid. And then afterwards, um, there are certain indications that we look for to see if someone may qualify for that treatment. Very often if you have a small tumor, say less than two centimeters, it's limited to the thyroid, it doesn't extend beyond it, they check the lymph nodes and the lymph nodes are not involved, and blood tests that are done after show low levels of thyroglobulin, which is a protein made by thyroid cells, you may not even need the radioactive iodine. It's more for patients who are at a slightly higher risk larger tumors, tumors that extend beyond the thyroid, involve the lymph nodes, and for younger patients, typically patients under the age of 45, those are all primary indications for radioactive iodine treatment. About eight weeks after the thyroid is removed, patients will undergo a low iodine diet for two weeks. At the end of those two weeks, then um, we will treat them with the radioactive iodine. Usually it's a capsule that you swallow. Um, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Now, with that being said, you have to follow some safety precautions because you're radioactive after you've taken it. You, we used to have to treat patients in the hospital. They'd have to stay in the hospital for three days. But nowadays, from, from what we've learned about radiation, radiation exposure, and safety, uh, as well as lower doses that we use today, you can do this safely at home if you follow some precautions. So for the first three days after, you have to have some kind of isolation. You're somewhat isolated from your family. You have to be able to use your own bathroom, sleep in your own bed, um, and stay arm's length away from other family members. You'll drink lots of water to help flush any excess radioactive iodine out of your system. Um, and you keep your laundry separate from other members of the family. You shower a couple times a day. This is because any excess radioactive iodine is coming out in your body fluids and sweat and saliva, so you're protecting your family members from that. At the end of the three days, you do a really thorough cleaning of the bathroom, you wash all your clothes um, and your bed sheets, and you get that room in order, the bathroom in order, and then you're good to go. At that point, the main restriction is off. There are some other light restrictions after that, but at the end of seven days, we would do a scan, and that scan is looking for that radioactive iodine to see where it's taken up. Usually you see some activity in the thyroid bed and that's it, nothing anywhere else, but we need to screen for evidence of metastatic disease and make sure nothing else is going on. For most patients, that's the end of their treatment. Now, afterwards, they follow with their endocrinologist, they get blood tests done to check their thyroid hormone levels. They usually do have to take thyroid supplements, the thyroid hormone like levothyroxine, um, for the rest of their lives because they don't have a normal functioning thyroid anymore. And for about 90 to 95 percent of cases, it never comes back and it's never a problem again. Um, fortunately, we have excellent treatment today for papillary thyroid carcinomas. It's a very low risk cancer um, and patients tend to do well. Um, here at Ironwood, I personally see about 40 to 50 thyroid cancer patients a year in consultation and do about 30 or so radioactive iodine treatments. So we're very experienced with it. Uh, when a patient first comes to see me here at Ironwood, uh, we do an initial consultation where I meet with them and their family to review their case. Uh, we also have uh, medical oncologists in cases that require uh, other therapies besides radioactive iodine like chemotherapy 
or targeted therapies. We also are able to do PET scans and CAT scans um, to look for evidence of cancer in the body. We have support services like a uh, registered dietitian, nutritionist, as well as uh, genetic counseling available uh, and social work services. We also have um, multiple different support groups that meet, including a head and neck cancer support group, which this would fall under that category, um, uh, to help service the patients so that they can find other people who've gone through some of the same experiences that they have uh, to offer that kind of support.